Okay. Steve, yes. Steve Rosenstock. Yes. Uh, your t extended morning service ridership trends, please. Yes. Um, actually, I have updated numbers. Um, the numbers that you see were up to week 16 and actually about um, the week after. Mm -hmm. um, the, the week after was the Ada Vida, and there were 1,500. And again, this is just morning. This does not account for any ridership in the afternoon. This is from 7 a.m. until 12. And, um, and you have no way to track the afternoon? There's no way to track the afternoon. Other than putting somebody on there to ask people, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we don't know how many actually are during the regular service outside of the approved morning service. Okay. But um, with the Ada Vita coming in, um, this, uh, the last week um, of January, it, uh, it, we were averaging around 600 um, per week. Nice. So an extra, basically, 10,000 people. Yes, and actually, the new number, which I just got today, if I add two more weeks, um, we're up to 10,763 trips. Um, and again, the average is around 600. Would you be kind enough to update the list, send it to all the board members electronically, and mm -hmm. copy Christine Burdick and Karen Cross and the um, CRA managers? Okay. City CRA managers for Ebor City and downtown in the Channel District, please. And uh, if you have the advisory board, do, do you ever contact the CRA advisory boards? Um, no. You probably don't. Okay. We'll, we'll deal with that. Okay, good. That's good. And was there more that you wanted to add to that, or is that good? That's it? May I add something? Please. Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Or is it okay if I jump in, John? Of course. I, I was going to ask Greg Bracken to come up. He wants to talk about, um, we have information on our average daily ridership, uh -huh. which I think is important to take into context uh, with total ridership. So, Greg, if you could talk about what we're looking at as far as the actual new start of the morning to when we would typically start service, that would be great. Sure, Greg Bracken, Director of Operations Support, ADE Officer. Um, on the screen, um, if you'll flip over to that, um, Steve, Ro or Steve Figenbaum, our planning development, has created this slide here to give you a breakdown by hour of the morning service. Um, the first hour, the 7 o'clock service, we're averaging 2.9 riders per hour. Uh -huh. uh, 8 o'clock is 5.9 hours. The 9 o'clock hour is 10.6. Uh, 10 o'clock is 22.6. And then the 11 o'clock is 34. Um, this number is um, taking the Avita um, cruise ship arrivals out of that, that calculation uh, because that is not a constant. On right, they price. skew it, sure. Correct. Um, we also broke down uh, what the actual breakdown of the cost is for that early morning service for you. Uh, the baseline vehicle hours per year is 12,421. Um, Half a year, excuse me, six months, that's correct. Uh, extra extended service uh, with the baseline uh, brings it up to 13761 for a half a year. Um, it's a total of 1340 is the difference between the regular service and the extended. At $125.42 um, per hour rate is $168,063 is the additional cost for that additional service in the morning. Um, there are some additional costs that we've incurred because of this service, um, because we uh, run a, a pool of seven uh, regular motormen. Uh, it's caused us to cross-train some of our bus operators to cover the extended hours, especially when we have a special events in that. It means our range of hours to cover those um, days uh, extremely long. So we've uh, incurred about $19,000 worth of overtime during that period as well. Uh, dispatchers and road supervisors as well to cover the additional service, and then schedulers and the NTA service. So there is uh, some additional cost out there. Uh, the 168,063 uh, plus the additional 37 of additional cost brings it to about 205,063 dollars 
Uh, I want to be sure that um, this also, these slides get um, uh, scanned and sent, sent to all the board members. Sure. Um, estimated revenue of 380 passengers um, came into um, about $760. Uh, for 26 weeks was additional revenue of $19,760. And if you back that out of that $205,000 cost, that brings it down to the net cost of $185,000. $303 to run that morning service. So, Fairbox is catching about 10% of the cost. Are you seeing any trends? Um, the, the first trip of the morning is, is definitely um, the one that's being ridden. The second and third hour is basically nil, and then it starts kicking back up, as you can see from our chart. Yeah, it is. I don't see that it's. I don't see that it's growing. Um, and the longer that we're out there, we don't see that it's been uh, expanding uh, on the ridership. Say that last sentence again. You don't see any trends. We don't see that it's continuing to grow from our initial rollout of the early morning service. It looks like it's the same riders. Uh, we're not picking up any additional as we go along. So, okay. So do you, do you have any recommendations as staff? I mean, uh, I, I assumed coming into the meeting that this, it was worthwhile to extend it. I still do, but I'm curious about your opinion since this is costing us a lot of money. Uh, all right, broken into two, two conversations. One is the service itself and the need for the service, and the second is, is the funding component. Right. On, on the funding component side, we <clears throat> are at a position where it, one, the streetcar budget nor Hart's budget can absorb the 200 and some thousand dollars that will require to extend that service right. without ample provision of funding from another source. Right. A couple of ways um, to, to, to address this. One, obviously, is to, well, not obviously, uh, one course of action would be to um, the THS board extend the service and we build a city of Tampa back for that. We have not had that conversation yet, so that's not a recommendation. It's just an option we would have to talk mm -hmm. to the city of Tampa of being able to absorb that additional $200,000 of service for the year. Um, and again, we have not even remotely broached that conversation um, yet. Well, we have mentioned to Bob McDonough that we're coming. We did that the last okay. morning. What that's worth. Um, the, the, oh. I'm sorry, Ruth Williams Burkhardt. I just wanted to interject from to uh, to add to Jeff's point on that is that for the sake of planning in terms of scheduling for the operations of the service in the morning, we do have to have a finite decision so that we can schedule because um, our contract with our bargaining unit does require us to provide advance notification of when the schedule is built. The slated pilot end date is March 26. And, um, you know, taking something to the city would be a very quick turnaround if we were to try to use that option to continue in a fluid service through the end of this fiscal year. So you may see that the service has to end at March 26, look to the budgeting for the next fiscal year to continue in full service next year. Well, how much notice do you have to give the union? The union has to have, it, it's, it's a, a 20, about 20 days notice they have, it, and then they bid on it, and there's two weeks from when it goes into service, but they also have to have, the schedulers in the service development side have to have time to build with or without this extra service, yeah, so, filling back the So what's our date? I, I want to know when. We really need to know within the next week or so, because the, the bid for the markup for the uh, union goes out first thing of March, and then they go into effect the third week of March. Okay, good, thank you. So I mentioned there were two, two um, funding opportunities. One, obviously, the discussion with the city of Tampa. And the other, and, uh, and not speaking for Miss Egan, she will be here um, soon, is our thoughts on someone needs to champion the service. And as 
um, as an example, I'll um, discuss Hart's um, hyperlink Tesla model. Um, we are looking at adding um, uh, Tesla vehicles um, to um, our, our hyperlink uh, first mile, last mile um, service up at the USF area. We're doing that with 100% zero funding from Hart. Um, we have um, champion community uh, folks to provide uh, funding from various organizations such as TICO and Florida Hospital and USF. Um, and who else am I missing? Uh, yeah, the businesses in that area have stepped up and provided Hart with cash checks to be able to move this service and provide this service with a pilot. Um, and the service time. is basically what? It's um, getting folks from their homes to the bus stops. And that's our hyperlink. We've, we've had a hyperlink for the last couple of months um, in the zone around the USF area. And it is part of the first mile, last mile um, initiative that we have underway. But we have worked a deal with um, uh, the USF incubator to insert Tesla vehicles there for environmental impact, um, innovative technology. And we've been able to do that without any public funds whatsoever being expended on it. So a conversation that we've had internally is, if we had someone to champion this in along the, the streetcar corridor to do the same type of, of investment discussion that we have had for the Tesla model, it would work really, really well with this. Um, with Tesla, we need to come up with $200,000-ish uh, for the lease over the next year or so. Uh, we're in the same ballpark here. Um, so just as a discussion, we, we feel pretty strongly that we do need someone to be able to be the champion of this, to go out there and talk to these businesses and uh, the redevelopment areas and, and garner not just pomp and circumstance support, but hardback dollars support for this um, initiative. <laughs> Good point. Okay. Any ideas? Um, well, that kind of segues into where our uh, marketing um, strategies have been. Um, so w what I would recommend is we listen to what um, these folks have to say about what they've been doing and what they will be doing, and then come back around to the conversation of, of okay. the, the what. Good. So with that... So we have Elevate, as you may recall, um, we have secured their services um, right. for this specifically, and we have representatives here this morning. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you guys for having me. Um, very excited to be working with you guys on this project. Uh, so we're sort of going at your guys' project on two different fronts. We're looking to try to get you guys um, connected with the community for your guys' promotional packages for um, the streetcar, and as well as trying to get your guys' name out there to increase ridership. So I'll go over a few of the things that we've been doing uh, for you guys so far. Uh, January was the first month that we were able to work with you guys. Um, since then, we've been live tweeting from the streetcar, uh, trying to get the picture of the trolley uh, with other businesses, tagging them. And we've had some, we've had uh, success with other people retweeting. Uh, getting a, getting the Tico Line Streetcar part of the conversation. Um, on the on the other front of introducing uh, Cesar Hernandez to other professionals around the community, uh, there's a couple businesses that are very interested in the promotional packages that you guys are talking about um, having available. Uh, so we definitely want to get that going with you guys. Um, another uh, another step that we're trying to take for you guys is to uh, get writer testimonials. We definitely want specific experiences. We want uh, folks who are taking the Tico Line streetcar as a part of their everyday commute. We definitely want to promote that, especially with keeping the morning services going, uh, which starts at 7 a.m. We definitely want to keep that going and show how, how vital that is for people who use that as their commute into the city. Um, events that you guys have coming up, we, we have an e-blast that goes out uh, to about 12,000 viewers. So w once a month, we try to keep you guys in our newsletter. 
definitely with events that you guys have coming up. Uh, Streetcar Live, we definitely want to, we're definitely promoting that. Um, we're also contributing to your guys' social media. Uh, we're giving you guys 40 posts a month for the next six months. Um, on top of that, we're doing Facebook Live uh, testimonials. You know, on, on top of the written testimonials that we're gathering from writers, we're also doing Facebook Live, which has been going very successful. We're able to find patrons who are, uh, for instance, we are running into a gentleman who takes the Tico Line Streetcar every week to go get groceries. Uh, and he uses the, the trolley to get to downtown, and then he uses the in-towner to get, to get around. So we did a Facebook Live interview with him, uh, but he's just, he's just one of many patrons that we've been able to interview and show the importance of, of not only a, of it as a tourist attraction, but an actual means of transportation to get around the city. Um, we, we hope to continue these services uh, in, into February, um, doing the same thing. Uh, and we hope to capitalize on some of the connections that we've made for the Tico Line Streetcar so far. Do you guys have any questions for me? Uh, that's all very interesting. I don't see how it turns into a sponsor, unless you all do. What's that? Yeah, yeah I have a Go question. Ahead, so, I mean, I, I know that the Kosh is always <clears throat> promoting out how you introduce, you know, he introduces people to people. So business to business. So my question is, how do you take your social media campaign and your communications campaign and get it into the hands and introduce the streetcar, introduce the board to the kinds of people that would want to come up and potentially lay out the kind of money we need in order to keep this going? I mean, that's my question. How do we take from more than a, than a communications awareness, how do we get that back into actual sponsor dollars? I mean, that's, you know, how do we get that exposure? We're currently working with Caesar right now. A big portion of, of our services that we do with the Elevate is taking uh, our is taking our clients to events, and there are definitely people that we're in contact with who who are trying to increase their own uh, their their own advertising, their own awareness, uh, and and something as you know promo promotional packages coming with the Tico Line Streetcar. That's something that's that's sparking interest. So uh, us to our our goal, our uh, our initiative is to take Caesar Hernandez. Uh, two events, as, as well as uh, other members of the Tico Line Street car when Caesar is unavailable. But to take him to those events, introduce him to people who we know are also looking for advertising, marketing opportunities, you know, that are going to be as beneficial as, as the packages that Tico Line Street car are going to have lined up. What's the, <clears throat> if I may add, what's yeah. the value to the Aid of Vita? I mean, if I look at the statistics that I saw on the ridership here, on the days when it's in town, so you had one, two, three, including the one you just said, I think was 1,500 in the one day that they didn't get in because of the fog. Mm -hmm. But if they were potentially here that day and you add this all up, that's 5,000 plus rides. So at five bucks a head, that's $25,000 alone from the A to V to just in a span of 16 or 17 weeks. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, I don't know how often it comes into port over the course of the year, but. I mean, if you transpose that out and look at what is the value to them as a as a as a, as a tremendous user, their their patrons are users. You know, what what kind of sponsorship opportunity, you know, or what kind of deals can we make with them uh, in terms of that with ridership? The cruise, Pardon yeah. me, with the cruise line? Yeah, I mean, there and and other cruise lines that that come in and out. I mean, I just rode over here. There were ten people on, and two of them had suitcases that rode from Greco Plaza to the stop right at the cruise ship here with their suitcases getting off to go to the cruise ship. How do we, you know, promote this with the cruise ship as another alternative in terms of people coming downtown and getting, you know, getting transportation to where the terminal are back and forth. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do it. So I don't know if the cruise ship industry is, is a viable option, but opportunity, but I can't imagine it wouldn't hurt to. Yeah, I mean, both them a little bit. I think these guys are social media consultants. I don't think they're. Oh, I understand, them, yeah. but I'm just throwing that out well, for, and, for and general. The, the cost of the six month pilot, you're only showing twenty thousand bucks in revenue, but that doesn't include must not include the cruise ships. If you're telling me you, we have five thousand bucks in revenue, it. It is all the ridership and all the revenue and your cost of the six-month pilot, does that include all the revenue from the German cruise ships too? It doesn't look like it. 
Yeah, because my mine alone is like twenty five grand if it's five bucks a head for a two way ride, right? A day, I, daily ticket, and you had five thousand of those alone. Great, thank we you. Did, we did back out the ridership on that, and so we didn't count. Because of that, we were trying to give you what the average, because the Ida Vita is the uh, quarterly or random trips that are coming on board. They're not regular. They're only through this part of the year. There's probably maybe one more, six total throughout the year. Um, so we didn't count that. Also, on one of those, on the weekend of New Year's Eve, we had free ridership that evening, so we can't. We would have to back out that number as well yeah. if we were going to look at total ridership. But we can bring you back or send you what the, with those numbers, what the in revenue was. No, I, and I understand why you did it this way because yeah. you really can't count on those. Right. Okay, so could could Steve Rosenstock come back? Okay, so I appreciate all the social media stuff you're doing. Um, and I know it takes a while for that to have an impact on, on ridership, and that's really what you're trying to do is increase ridership with that kind of effort, correct? Um, yes, and also trying to raise some money. We did have a talk with Direct Media, and um, we're setting up a rate card for sponsorships on um, possible stations of which Elevate indicated St. Leo might be a possibility of which I believe Caesar is moving with or has in that way. Um, however, um, at $10,000, let's say, for a station of which is about what we're looking at, it still doesn't make up for the 200 or something thousand dollars. Yeah, sure. So, um, and again, um, just to reiterate with Direct Media, um, when they first came on board, they did say sponsorships are not their thing. Right. No, I understand. I mean, I understand that, a new, that the new service, when, when we were new, we were raising a lot of money. How long did it take you to put that deal together at USF? A year? Um, Caesar, how long did it take us to get the whole Tesla deal together? From from early discussions with, with Mark to where we're at today. As far as funding or? As far as putting it in Putting service. it in place. Well, as, yeah, it's not a service yet, but another week. Yeah. All right, so. That's money raised. I want to say about seven months, and that will include money raised. Like, we essentially have been raising money up until this morning. Um, we have around 195000 committed. Um, it took about six, seven months. Yeah. So. Okay, so it's new, it's exciting, it's never been done, it's Tesla's. And, ver and, and wonderful, wonderful deal. I love it. But what we're talking about is the streetcar that's been here for 15 years. Morning service, which doesn't carry a lot of people. I don't know who would write a check for thirty thousand bucks a month to pay for this service. I don't. Maybe you do, but I don't. If we knew them, I think we'd be we would be. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, so, I, I guess my point is that if we think this is um, worthwhile. And you were out of the room, but uh, we asked, and Greg said he hasn't seen any trends in terms of growth ridership. It's steady, and it's a service. It's just part of our service. So if we want to continue it, we've got to come up with that money. Um, I was looking back at the at the um, audit, the draft audit. It looks to me like we have, an, and Jeff, you may be able to um, tell me, where exactly that number is, but I think we've got about four hundred and fifty thousand bucks in the endowment fund. He was in that neighborhood, yes, sir. So we could use part of that. Um, we could take a hundred thousand bucks out of it, or half of this cost, and get the city to write a check for the other half. I don't know what we'd have to do to do a budget amendment to get that money. I'm not quite sure what the. We don't typically change our budget, but um, I think the conversation, frankly, has to be had with the city of Tampa. I don't see the port changing yes. its mind. Um, I don't know how valuable the morning service is to the port other than the German cruise ships, and they're coasting for free on that, and they've shown no interest in spending another nickel. 
Um, they blew you off most recently. So I, I don't know what to do, and I don't know that we should continue this. But if we're going to, um, either we have to pay for it or the city has to pay for it, or we have to somehow split the cost with the city, because you guys are tapped out of this. It's a diplomatic way to put it. Well, you you know, obviously it, this cost you a lot more even than you thought it would. Um, so I think um, it's not no longer your responsibility to, to figure out how how to pay for operating for this thing. So what do you guys think? I mean, is it useful? Do you want to, what do you think we should do? Well, it certainly makes my life a lot easier. I just wrote it over. I mean, um, damn right. Where's yeah. Mickey's check? And you use it all the time. And I use I, it all the time. And frankly, I use it a lot. And and it it pains me to think that I wouldn't be able to use it to come to the board meetings and all the committee meetings that I sit on on heart. Uh, you know, I think it's 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 a great certainly a convenience. It's a great tool that you know I write it early in the morning when I come to the board meetings and the committee meetings and. There's a lot of times I'm the only person on it. I mean, I'll be frank and honest about it. Yeah, uh, for the for the cost associated with the ridership, it's obvious that it's not return getting a return on that investment that we had hoped it would. It's obvious it's not seen as a commuter option, and so, you know, I'm as, as much as I like it, as much as I want it to move forward, I'm also have a fiscal responsibility to the organization. To do that, unless we can find some kind of an angel investor here very quickly to to do that, I mean, and who is that? You know, I, I mean, I, you know, what, who's out there that that would want to do that, and what kind of value does it do for the community, and what does Ebor see of it uh, in terms of bringing people into Ebor? It's not so much, you know, it may be an opposite way. To, are there people coming to use it to go to Ebor City uh, to enjoy Ebor during the day or come to lunch? You know, in a row? I think you see, you know, with the 11 a.m. time slot, obviously, is a lot bigger, and I would assume there are people using that to come here for lunch more so than than any other time. So, I mean, I, I, you know, I struggle with the the value of what I see to bring to the community. As an, I'm sorry, I thought it was turned off, um, and. Uh, uh, versus what our fiscal responsibility is, you know, is is there a way if if we don't have the money, you know, I certainly don't want to take money from other sources within the organization of operations in order to to do this where that money could be better spent in other operations that provide a service that's more robust for the community to use. That's a dilemma I, I'm looking at from a, a standpoint of it. Yeah. I mean, what do you think, Abby? You know, I, th I think the pilot program was wonderful. Um, I think without a long-term plan for it, though, people can't give up their parking spaces in downtown to do a pilot. So unless there's a long-time term commitment, like just money aside, they'll have they would give up their parking space, and then we stop this, and all of a sudden they have to get on a wait list to get parking again downtown. So. I think that was kind of a hindrance. Yeah. If it was a long-term plan, then maybe people would feel more comfortable giving up those spaces. Right. And well, and riding. I think I, I think the parking is the key issue. Um, in, in a as a company that's in a hiring mode right now, we can't find parking um, in downtown for our new employees. So, you know, I, I mean, the other thing is, you know, going to the city and saying, you know, you got two big city lots here in Ebor. You know, can an option for for people who work in downtown be park in Ebor, and let's cut a deal on how they can use the streetcar to get, you know, get to downtown uh, when they come in Ebor and park, you know, in the day instead of trying to, uh, you know, scrounge around in downtown and try and find any available spot that's there, uh, which are virtually none at this point in time. It's I mean, that, that that would be you know the only other option in terms of what value does it bring to the city for uh, you know development opportunities that we're going to see in downtown because they're happening and and that's uh, you know it's a parking alternative that we may have to look at as a you know a new different kind of urban solution to the parking problem in downtown. But I'm not sure you're going to get that done in a week when you need the decision made. Yeah. Uh, well, and and compounding for, that from a transportation perspective is. You know, if somebody is driving the first 25% of their trip, you have a good opportunity for them to park 
at a park and ride and make a single seat transfer. But when we're talking about folks who have driven essentially to downtown to be competitive to get someone into downtown, now we're talking about that person getting off the highway, exiting, coming to an Ebor garage, parking, coming out of how many levels, coming down, getting to the streetcar, connecting, Ready and then their final trip. There's just there's a lot of things that make that not be attractive as an offset. Um, for parking. Now, if parking were $25 a day in downtown, people would probably do that, but we're just not at that point that parking mm-hmm. is tight enough or expensive enough in downtown that the time premium is compounded there. Uh, and then a point to, to Abby, without a long-term commitment, you know, we're, we're in the first blush of ridership. Mm-hmm. From a transit perspective, when we put new things out, we, we look at them after 18 months to two years. Mm-hmm. So three months is it's not long enough for us to be able to evaluate it, but you're right. We, we see that in our other modes. If folks don't have it long term, it's much more difficult to get good usage on it. So we've, been, we've been doing this for six months, right? I began in October. So, October, so it will have been December. six months. Yes, sir. So this is four months at this point. So do you have a professional opinion about this, irrespective of the money? I think it goes back to some of our bigger conversations that a, a real schedule is a million-dollar investment. It's starting early with good frequency, so 10, 15 minutes in the rush hour and through the long day, and that's where you actually track the service. It's, um, to an extent, the same conversation happening on the ferry. The ferry's a great idea, but with two trips a day, no one will take it. Right. And if you can't afford the big schedule, which is all-day service and very frequent guaranteed rides home, how are you competitive there? I, so I would... I would recommend that we can talk to the city and see what their ideas are about coming up with additional funding on it. Um, I would not anticipate that the downtown assessment would increase enough to cover the full cost of this for next year. Um, we, uh, so I don't know what their, their idea is to fund it, but I think our broader conversation, we are, we are the operator. We obviously love running the streetcar. But in our universe of operating, we don't have the, the staff. Though our staff is fabulous and we love our friends at Elevate, we don't have the skill set to go out and grow to get to the million-dollar investment. So what is the opportunity for us as the operator and this board to work together maybe to find those champions? And and that feels like that's what is lacking here because we can do a great job. And I, and I think in the, the time that, that our dream team has been working on this, we've done a lot more with Streetcar. Um, from putting the Bernie in downstairs to trying to do morning service. But clearly there are limits to the way that we're configured, so how do we get to the next level? I think that might be a good conversation to have. And I have no idea what the answer is. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, I think that we need to have a conversation with the city. Um, and I think that means McDonough. And it probably means you, Catherine, and maybe you, one of you too. He won't listen to me, frankly. Um, but he, he will probably listen to Abby or Mickey. But what I'd really like is for that conversation to happen in the next few days. And, and show him all of this and say we really need more money to do this and see what he has to say. Okay. And you might point out that there is a, a small surplus in the endowment. Um, so part of the cost of this could be um, offset by, by half of this cost coming from the endowment. And I think the arguments are, as you say, that when you start a service, it takes a couple of years. It has to be permanent. So our goal would be to find the money to run through the end of the fiscal year and then incorporate this service at the least into next year's budget, and that would be our intention. So we'll be wanting more money from someplace. Um, you know, I appreciate the champion stuff, but this isn't an entrepreneurial town about public transit, as you well know. I'm impressed with the deal you've got. I think that you've got some bells and whistles you're selling that are pretty cool, and this is no longer a new bell and whistle. And so the money that we were able to raise um, for naming rights and endowments, those days are long gone, and I know that from um, personal experience. This is a good streetcar system. It needs to be better funded. And, and I think that we've taken a risk to improve this quality of service. And I hate to stop it. I think people would be really pissed. I think it, we would just get dissed for it and for not being able to find the money to continue it. And so I need some pressure put on the city. And if I need to write a letter to the mayor, I'd be happy to do that. We'll get with um, Bob.
Bob today. I'll at least get him this, the presentation. I'll get a call to him. I'm flying out uh, Monday afternoon, so we'll see what we can get done between now and me being out for the week. Yeah, I mean, I really think that we need to, um, if I heard um, correctly, we really need a, a, a decision. We need to put him on notice that we need a decision in, in, in two weeks flat, minimum, uh, maximum. We'd really like a decision in a week, and it isn't that hard a decision. It shouldn't be. So which of you feel like, um, which of you feel like you would be comfortable talking, or both of you? Well, you can't because it's sunshine. So I'd like one of you to go with Catherine and really sit down and talk to Bob. He probably had more experience with the morning service. Well, I can speak to the morning sir. I know, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, Bob and I go way back, okay. so, okay. And, and I use it, and I'm a champion, I'm a personal champion for <laughs> it, certainly. Um, so, um, I'd be happy to do it, and I'm here. Right. And available, so. Um, would it help Thanks. if you were hand-delivering a letter from our board? What are or your no? thoughts? I don't know. Letters to the mayor bounce off, you know, the press sees them. I'd rather it just be a serious conversation. I'm good with that. Okay. And we'll reach out to um, our, another hard appointee on this board, Councilman Suarez, if that's appropriate. Well, you can't have him in the same meeting. No, no, not to have him in the meeting, but for Tell him to be posted on, sure. so he knows what we're talking about with sure, the city. Sure, sure, because we're... And if that's another voice, it can be strong for those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't know what else to do. I mean... If there's a champion out there who can write a big check for the streetcar, it's been a long time, and I don't know who it is anymore. Um, you know, we've tried with um, the Lightning, and they're just as tight-fisted as they ever were with us. So um, he's really the only really rich guy on the line that I know that understands transit. I just don't know how to make that pitch at this point. I don't think he's interested until a decision is made by the city to improve the streetcar in a big way. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the impression I've gotten. Um, so I, I don't know what else to do other than this. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's the most prudent way, based on the, you know, the fact that we've got to make a decision very quickly. And I really want to, know, I really want to continue this service. I really don't so want why. to take it out of the endowment, which frankly fluctuates that's not entirely stable cash it's there and we could take part of it if we needed to i really would like the city to pay for this well and if you take part of the endowment for it now you are not in the situation that this board can take part of the endowment next year so that's i mean right. it's, it, it will get it can be part of a band-aid but if the solution is something sustainable the endowment is yeah, not I, the source for i it. wouldn't go mm -hmm. into that meeting with it that as a bargaining chip yeah, I, I i agree i think that you know it's I don't want to gamble the endowment money if, if that's not necessary to do in order to do this. I mean, we, the, uh, you know, there, there's two ways to look at this. That's it's it's difficult. We are we're obviously struggling with this decision because we really want it to work, but the numbers aren't showing that. Not to say that if we decide to discontinue the service at this time, that we couldn't go out there and <clears throat> lobby for it in the future and get the man somehow, whether it's the units coming online both in downtown and in the channel district, uh, you know, for options uh, you know, to be able to use it as a transit alternative. I think there you know, are other, other ways to do it down in the future because we are going to have a tremendous amount of uh, new residential units going in the channel district and around the arena in the next few years. And, you know, the density that is going to be created hopefully will create a demand. Yeah, I mean, it would be deplorable to stop this service. A really bad idea. When we hear from the from our motormen and our the motor mates out there that folks give them, they that the folks who are out there really appreciate it. It's a nice surprise still for many folks who are traveling from out of town, and and this is what you're also seeing. Like at eleven, it's the folks who go out to the streetcar and thought it ran at noon. Oh, I can catch it now. This way of the shouldering of service, but mm -hmm. the staff feels very strongly about it as well, and they feel that it's been well received. It's anecdotal, but they they do report. Folks really like it, and they'd love to see it continue. Yeah, I mean, it's additional 10,000 riders. 
We'll take all the riders we can get. Well, we need them. We need them. All right, yeah. good. Any other business? If not, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Friend.